Hello and welcome back. All right, so you may have asked yourself, how in the world does this get created and why do we even need this, right? I mean, you know, VirtualBox has its own thing, doesn't it? Well, yeah, actually it does. Um, but VirtualBox is not the only emulator that you may want to use. You want something that you can use in all of your emulators, such as QEMU. And in fact, if I run QEMU, it will actually, again, look for that. So VirtualBox also uses this, as you've noticed. This is why we created the HDD extension. Now, hard disk drive. Now, the interesting part about this is if you were to take this program, and by the way, this program is a free hex editor that you can actually use. This is it. I'll have the link in the description. Now, what this can do is it allows you to view the file. So I'm just going to drag it over. Now, I have designed this uh, so that I can see this bigger on YouTube videos, but uh, it doesn't normally look like this. It's all black and white normally. You can customize it all in here. But this program is a great program to be able to, it's a free hex editor, why not? Anyhow, all of this, it shows you like the first 512 byte sector, uh, this is sector zero or sector one, I guess, depending on which uh, YouTube video you look at. But anyways, they all talk about um, legacy booting. Well, the boot sector that they're, or signature they're talking about is 55A8, which is backwards when you use Little Indian. The x86-64 or any of the x86 architecture all use Little Indian. Mac, on the other hand, they use Big Indian. So this will be reversed, these two numbers here. So anyways, just uh, letting you know about that. Um, although, I don't believe Mac actually uses this boot signature at all. Uh, they use e, uh, EFI from the get-go. So, Anyhow, you can actually uh, examine this 40 meg fi <coughs> file. And, uh, excuse me, sorry about this. Wow. Dry throat. Okay, so... Uh, the EFI, and we will get into the partitions and all that and how this works in a future video, but at least wanted to show you what it looked like before I delete this file. So delete, close this. And this whole video is about this image creator program that I created <clears throat> so that you'll be able to create the actual image itself from scratch using this program. Now, this little function right here creates a blank 40 meg image. You can actually create any of these. You just replace it with this number. Notice that I'm using this number here from here. This creates the 40 meg. If you want the larger ones, you can see how I've done that right here. The, <clears throat> the only problem is if you use any of these three, then this becomes useless. It will not work for you. Um, yeah. I designed this strictly for this here, okay? And that is because of portability, because I have all of this on my uh, GitHub, and I don't want, I did not want to constantly use up a lot of space, uh, especially for people who don't have a bandwidth to constantly download these kinds of sizes. Anyhow, we create the drive with this here, and it creates a blank image, and it fills it all with zeros. All right. And basically, they're like null pointers in a sense. I don't know. You can, you can call it that. It's not true zeros. Um, let's see what else. Okay. So let's create the blank image. So I can show you what normally happens when you don't use uh, my code to, to create the GPT. So what I'm going to do is run that, close that, say yes, go back here, create the image, and voila. That creates the program here. All right, and then we take this and run it. And now we can actually open up our hex editor again. And since I did not add in the GPT stuff, that means that it's created a blank, you know, nulled out, um, you know, image file. It's completely blank. So with that, we take this, go to cut, back up, go to drive, and paste it in here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to mount that with our trusty 
mount program here. Go here, there, point to it, open, next, entire image. Notice there's no uh, info this time. Next, we want to actually access to this. Now you notice there's no thing here. Well, that's because we have to change it to physical disk. So we're tricking Windows into thinking this is a physical disk. Change it to direct and HDD. Same mount, wait for it, and voila, notice there's nothing here. So we have to minimize that for a second. And let's say we open up our folder here, and you have to right click. Now, before I do that, notice it's not listed here, okay? These are drives on my actual computer. Right click up here, this PC, and go to manage. Now, that little function that I have with all those numbers, it actually takes care of all of this for you. So you don't even have to mess with all this. But let's say you created a blank image. Well, then you have to physically do it this way, manually, by clicking uh, disk image, uh, GPT. We're not dealing with a master boot record. That's legacy. So we are working with a GPT. Say OK. Wait for it. And then you come down here, and of course this is our little 40 meg file, say new volume, next, next, leave the default. All right, uncheck the perform quick. We're going to give it a, a test OS. And what we want is FAT32. It must be FAT32 because FAT32 is recognized by pretty much all hardware. If you use FAT on some hardware, it might boot. It even might boot on the x86-64 hardware that your computer runs off of. But that's not guaranteed. What is guaranteed is FAT32, and you can read about this in the actual UEFI uh, PDF specs. It actually tells you all this. Now, because I'm creating only a 40 meg uh, virtual hard drive, we have to use allocation size of 512. If this was, say, a 256 meg, well, then you would you choose 2048. Don't go larger, okay? But because it's only 40 meg, we have to choose 512 here, all right? So next, finish, wait for it, does this thing, and voila, we now have this. So we can go ahead and close that. We don't need that anymore. And this is where you would actually create uh, the folder for the EFI. If I go into it and another subfolder, B-O-O-T. And by the way, the, these two folders is also mentioned in the actual PDF specs. So now if we were to, uh, let's see, let's close that. Oh, yeah, open that. I forgot. And you'll notice it's right here, by the way. Okay. So now if we go into, say, uh, source, we already did tutorial there, but let's go ahead and just make that. We already know it's going to work. So uh, cut and paste that into here. And voila, you already know the routine on that. So you have to open this back up. Notice now it actually shows here, and I'm going to stretch this out. It actually says FAT32, and it shows this now. So we click the physical drive here and say dismount and exit. And now we can actually run this in VirtualBox or QEMU, and it will actually uh, boot off of the, our drive that we created. And voila, that's pretty much it. There's not much else to know about this. Um, you know, um, if you have any questions, just uh, find me in my Discord, and uh, I guess I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.